Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Rowe here. Today we continue Conrad Kerr's week with a look at the relationship between Kerr's and his brother Magnus the Red, Primarch of the Thousand Sons. First off, a big thank you to Kanat for the virtual gift voucher. Apologies if I haven't pronounced your name right there. And also there was an anonymous one too with no name. So whoever you are, thank you very much. Remember to put your name guys so I can thank you in person. But of course, if you don't want to, that's fine. Either way, I really do appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. Now, spoiler warning to begin. The particular events we are going to be looking at today come from the short story, The Abyssal Edge. And I'll have a link in the description to the Black Library website for those who wish to purchase it. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first, as that's how you get the most enjoyment out of them. But not only that, we help to support the great Black Library and Games Workshop, because without them, we wouldn't have all this amazing lore to share and talk about with each other. But with that said, let's jump straight in. Now, this encounter takes place during the Great Crusade, where the Thousand Suns Legion and the Night Lords are working together to bring a world into compliance. And of course, as always, where the Thousand Suns are involved, they wish to preserve and study the knowledge they have found, a library tower in this particular case. Unfortunately for them, Kurz has a much more black and white outlook. Their knowledge is corrupt and against the Imperial truth. Now, this scene begins with Magnus standing before his brother Conrad, imploring him with, knowledge is neither good nor evil, brother. It gains morality only in its use. If used with malice in mind, it becomes evil. If used to benefit others, it becomes good. And this opening statement is so very Magnus. Yes, there are truths to his comments here. For example, if you use a shovel to dig a hole, then it's a tool. But if you smack someone over the head with it, it's a weapon. So yes, it's the intention that becomes the deciding factor, if you will. But it's his underlying arrogance that is always so present with Magnus. It doesn't matter what he finds, what knowledge he gains, as far as he's concerned, he'll control it. And Kurz's response to this is an almost disdain for his brother's plea. He doesn't even look up to him, just remains seated playing with his claws, retracting them over and over before matter-of-factly telling him, the law is the law. Then even Sevatar speaks up to Magnus, spare us your moral relativism, uncle. There's a reason Sevatar is one of the most popular non-Primarch characters out there from the Heresy series, and it's just his little comments like this, just exhibiting his character, no qualm speaking his mind to a Primarch, no less. And I love the way he always calls the other ones uncle. Magnus just blanks him, not even bothering to look at him. If your sons cannot keep from childish outbursts, brother, perhaps it's best they leave us. Magnus, of course, is no fool and realises his argument has been falling upon deaf ears. So wisely, he adopts a better approach, kneeling before his brother, meeting his gaze and softening his voice. Pull your men back from the tower, comrade. You think me too proud to compromise? I am not. Not over a matter so vital, for knowledge so critical. Give me two weeks to comb the depths of this trove, to separate the truth from the harmful lies. I will destroy anything that bears the stain of deceit myself. The claws slashed free. They slid back into their Van Brace housings. They slashed back out again. Do not do this, Magnus pressed. Do not commit this law to flame. Conrad Kurz lifted his dark eyes to meet his brother's half gaze. I will brook no compromise. I will give no ground. The library will burn. Here we see Kurz doesn't deal in compromises. He deals in absolutes. The law is against the imperial truth and thus will be destroyed. No debate. At first I thought how much this interaction showed the differences between the two Primarchs and of course it does, but then I realised how it also shows how similar they are in their convictions and their stubbornness. 
Magnus in his pursuit of knowledge and Conrad in his pursuit of prosecuting justice. Each Primarch so dedicated to the nature of their creation. And this leads the Primarchs on to the inevitable discussion of their father, the Emperor of Mankind. Brother, Magnus's voice was a strangled plea. Let me send word to our father first. Let his word be the judgment we seek. He would never wish this library destroyed, I promise you. And I will remain with you while we wait. Neither I nor my sons will enter the Tower of Serenity until the Emperor sends his blessing. How confident you are, the Night Haunter replied. He had gone back to looking down at his hands, the claws slashed out yet again. I am, Magnus confessed, passion giving heart to his tone. I am, brother. For decades, even before my rediscovery and Prospero's welcome into the Imperium, I spoke with father across the tides of the great ocean, mind to mind, soul to soul. Soul. Kurz's chuckle was the rasp of a saw blade across bone. Soul. You talk such pretty nonsense, brother. Spirits and tutelaries and great oceans and souls. Magnus rose to his feet. Gold flashed as he turned away in regret. Kurz's anemic visage settled into a miserable mask of indulgence. Do you believe you are the only one to have spoken with father? That you alone know his wishes and his secrets? And what he desires us to achieve out here? Tell me truly, Magnus. Do you honestly think we are all nothing but fools? capering in your shadow. And that's a really interesting point raised by Kurz. Magnus, as I've said in previous uploads, does have one of the closer bonds with his father during the Great Crusade era, due to their shared psychic gift. As Magnus says, he was speaking to the Emperor long before he ever reached Prospero. But that doesn't mean he alone knows the Emperor better than any of his brothers. Horus spent more time with the Emperor than any of them. And the Emperor clearly has a close bond with several of the other Primarchs. Kurz is absolutely right in his comments here that Magnus is not the only Primarch to have spoken with the Emperor about his goals. All of the Primarchs have. And it, again, it goes back to their nature. I believe Kurz is doing exactly what the Emperor expects of him here implementing the imperial truth. Yes, he may be very literal on his interpretation of it, but again, that's who he is. The Crimson King's features hardened, as did his voice. I speak of revelation and vision, and you speak petty words of bitterness, brother. I'd hoped for so much more. Was your hunger to destroy not sated with the massacres you afflicted upon the people of this world? Massacres, Kurz murmured the words, that you did not stop. Massacres that spared 90% of this world's population and reached compliance in half the time Gilliman had estimated. So do not object to my massacres and do not speak the word as if it were some filthy sin. Was that a little sly pop at Gilliman there, Kurz? Of course, the age old question when it comes to Kurz and his methods does the end justify the means. Their conversation continues with Magnus ceding that the campaign was Kurz's to prosecute as he sees fit, but that the knowledge in the library is not. But Kurz will simply not have it, almost mocking his brother, asking what he would do with it. Take it to Prospero? Set it free for all to learn? And Magnus then begins to feel the realisation that it's all from hate. Simple, Selfish hate. It isn't spite that binds me to this course of action, the Night Lord's Primarch said softly. The knowledge in that spire is the crown jewel of a corrupt culture. Their beliefs should be destroyed to aid compliance and prevent a backslide into heathenism. Obedience is what matters, Magnus. They will be taught to obey through obedience they will become imperial. No, Conrad. Sensing a chance for unity, 
Magnus matched his tone to his brother's. You may be right about the people of this world, but not the knowledge they've accrued. Let me take it to the Emperor, that's all I ask. I've already told you, I will brook no compromise. I will give no ground. Drop the kind shield around the Tower of Serenity, for if your warriors seek to maintain the barrier once bombardment begins, I can't promise they will remain unharmed. You wouldn't, Magnus sighed. Even your murderous clan wouldn't open fire on their own brothers. All you prove, Kurz said, is how little you know me. Sevatar, give the order to open fire. Magnus's remaining eye widened. He reached out a hand. Brother, this is Sevatar, the Night Lord spoke across the Vox network. Open fire on the tower. Bring it down. Brother, Magnus called, then ceased. He tensed, wincing as he felt the impacts begin on the psychic shields his sons had raised around the treasure. Several of the thousand sons present grunted and staggered in psionic sympathy. Keep in mind here that this is during the Great Crusade, long before the heresy. This is a major event, a legion opening fire upon another legion. Something absolutely unheard of. Say what you will about Conrad Kurz, whether you love him or hate him, but the guy's got balls of solid rock. When the Emperor came to my world, he brought light to Nostramo, a world that had never seen the sun. He brought the light of knowledge, Magnus. Suddenly my people could see the wider galaxy around them. They could perceive other worlds and other cultures. City after city that didn't dwell in the endless dark. Civilizations of peace and laughter. That knowledge didn't free them, brother. It shackled them. It wrapped them in misery. Nostromo heaves with their sorrow, that the cost of their peace is fear and blackness. My people suffer in my absence. Law breaks down as they fight their bindings. And why? Because of knowledge. Because a well-meaning teacher brought a perspective they weren't yet ready to know. Magnus's features were tight with concentration. Even so, he shook his head, his voice breathy with realization. You are a hateful, blind creature. The Emperor will hear of this. Kurz didn't gloat. He didn't even smile. How long can you hold that barrier for, Magnus? Forever, if I wish it. Now it was Magnus speaking through clenched teeth. Forever and a day. Kurz still didn't smile. Though, did his eyes glint with cold mirth? It seemed to at least one observer that they did. And how long before your legionaries begin to wear out from exhaustion? How long before accidents occur and all of those detonating shells kill your sons on the ground? A day? A week? A month? I have the ammunition. Or I could pull my warriors back and open fire with the nightfall. How long would you keep your thousand sons on the surface then? This only ends one way, Magnus my way. I would rather you stood with me and prevented the bloodshed. Your men don't deserve to die for their misguided optimism. Magnus nodded, the gesture one of acceptance if not agreement. I will remember this, Conrad. I promise you, I will remember this. What an awesome interaction this is and Kurz, let's be honest, coming out very much on top here as well. This only ends one way, Magnus, my way. This could easily come across as Kurz hating his brother, but as I mentioned in the previous uploads, Kurz only really hated one of his brothers, that, that was Korax. He really just had a disdain for Magnus's self-righteousness here, believing that he of course knew what the Emperor wanted. There's no way Conrad Kurz would know compared to him. But for Magnus's part, he does lower himself down to ask for a compromise. And he could very easily have reacted in anger and attacked when Kurz ordered the Night Lords to open fire. It's interesting to ponder why he didn't. But then again, Magnus didn't exactly willingly turn to Horus's side during the heresy. 
more the events kind of pushed him there. He was certainly loyal in his heart at this time, and I don't believe he would ever willingly fight one of his brothers, even one so estranged to him as comrade. But what do you think here guys? Was Kurz in the right, or did he cross the line? Should he have listened to Magnus's compromise and asked the Emperor for a decision? What do you think the Emperor would have said? And especially, what do you think his reaction would have been if and when Magnus told him about Kerr's opening fire? As always, drop your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. And a huge thank you to all of my subscribers. Your support really means a lot to me, it truly does. And if you're new, then please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. If you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.